Okay, so uh, in this unit, we're going to talk about perspective. And you've heard of perspective, I'm sure. There's a couple of different kinds of meanings to the word perspective. We can think of it in terms of our point of view and how we see things and how we see the world. That's one meaning of perspective. Um, but what we're really talking about is linear perspective and literally how to translate the depth that exists in the world onto the flat surface that we are drawing on. So we're going to look specifically and do some exercises on one, two, and three point perspective. But first I want to talk a little bit about perspective in general. Okay, so what is perspective? It's a, in, in this case, in the way that we're talking about it in this class, it's a graphic system that creates the illusion of depth and volume on a two-dimensional surface. So we're gonna go through some terms that relate to this. One is the picture plane. The picture plane is the surface of a drawing or picture. So this is when we're translating something that exists in the world and is a three-dimensional thing or a three-dimensional space that you can enter. We have to think about its relationship to the picture plane when we are translating that image into a two-dimensional flat depiction on uh, a surface, on whatever substrate we're working on, in our case, in our sketchbooks, right? Picture plane. Illusion. One of the things that we are doing when we're working with perspective is we are creating illusions. We're creating deceptions, right? We're trying to trick people's eyes into looking at this flat piece of paper and seeing something that looks three-dimensional and looks like realistic space that they enter in the world. So an illusion is a mistaken con conception of reality. And as artists, as drawers, as people who are trying to create observation-based representational work, um, we're illusionists, right? That's what we're doing. Two-dimensional, so I've said two-dimensional a lot. That means having only two dimensions, height and width. Three-dimensional is when we have three dimensions, height, width, and depth. And what we're doing as illusionist artists is we're trying to represent three dimensions on a two-dimensional surface. A dimension is a measure of spatial extent, scope, or magnitude, especially using width, height, length, and depth. Overlapping. So one of the things that contributes to um, a convincing illusion, a convincing perspective of depth on a two-dimensional surface is when we have overlapping, when we have one object that partially covers another object. And this is something you've already been thinking about this semester, right? When you did your landscapes on plein air, you were looking at how different trees and bushes and things were in front of one another. When we talked about sighting and measuring and mapping, we were looking at the relationship between objects as we were um, transcribing them onto the page. When we talked about ideas of form and when we were talking about value, we were looking at all those different geometric forms placed in relationship to each other. So this is not a new concept, but we're going to think about it as one of our tools to creating accurate and compelling perspective. Size. This also seems kind of obvious, but sometimes saying these things out loud and getting all these definitions out there helps kind of round out the understanding of what we're doing. Large objects appear to be closer to the viewer than small objects. So when we're working on perspective, um, especially when we're in this example, we're looking at one point perspective, forms diminish in, side, in size as they move toward the vanishing point or toward the horizon line, okay? Placement, and again, this is not a new consideration. We've been thinking about placement all semester, but we're just going to think about it now um, in the context of perspective. So objects placed low on the picture plane seem to be closer to the viewer than objects placed up higher, more near eye level. So the closer you get to that horizon line, the further back something appears to be in the picture plane. Foreground, middle ground, background. These are exactly what they sound like. The foreground is the part of the picture plane that appears nearest to you. The middle ground is the area between the foreground and the background. And the background is the part of the picture plane that appears the furthest away from you depth, width, length, and height. 
So these have pretty obvious definitions. Um, and I, I'm not necessarily going to read this to you. I think that you can understand what they are. Um, but they're definitely something that we need to consider. Another thing to consider is how we perceive things that are closer to us and further away in terms of how much detail and how sharp they look. So objects with clear, sharp edges and visible details seem to be closer to the viewer than objects that are a little bit hazier and less detailed. Those seem to be further away. That's called atmospheric perspective, and we'll talk about that a little later. Um, it's another reason if you take art history too, particularly, and you look at uh, Northern Renaissance painters like Jean Van Eyck, who's known for his encyclopedic detail, everything in his paintings is sharp and super, super detailed all the way throughout the picture plane, which while they have this really realistic quality in some aspects, the fact that they're so sharp and have such encyclopedic detail at all levels of distance kind of lends them this weird feeling where they seem uh, actually not that realistic because nothing um, diminishes in detail as it recedes in space. So atmospheric perspective is what I was just kind of talking about. Um, and this has to do not only with sharpness and details, but also when we're working with color, particularly in painting, it has to do with the intensity of the color. So things that are very brightly colored um, seem to be closer and things with more dull colors seem to be further away. And it's the same kind of idea as things with sharp, uh, with sharp edges and lots of details tend to be feel like they're closer, while things are a little bit more hazy and blurry seem to be further away. Converging lines. So converging lines is something we're going to talk about with perspective and that you'll have to uh, deal with when you're working in perspective. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a example of one-point perspective. So converging lines here are parallel lines that seem to meet at one point. So things that you know are par parallel, like in this example, the top and bottom of these windows on this hallway, we know that in reality those are parallel and don't slant in. But because of perspective, because of linear perspective, they converge, they recede and converge, meaning they come together toward the vanishing point on the horizon line. And the horizon line an imaginary line where the sky and the earth meet. And in one point perspective and two point perspective, it is where our vanishing points are located. Okay, let's talk about vanishing points a little bit. This is a point on the horizon where receding parallel lines seem to meet. Now, when you have something like the example I have here, which is actually three point perspective, it gets a little bit more complicated because you have multiple vanishing points instead of just one, like in one point perspective. This will make more sense in our exercises. We're gonna do exercises where we examine um, one point, two point, and three point perspective and how to draw them. But basically the vanishing point is the point where the lines come together, where the lines converge. Linear perspective. One way of using lines to show distance and depth is called linear perspective. As parallel lines move away from you, they seem to move closer together toward the horizon line, and that is what we call linear perspective. One point perspective is where we have all of those parallel lines vanishing into one point, into one vanishing point, thus one point perspective. True shapes, so surfaces that face the viewer appear as their true shapes without any distortion. So when you're looking at something, like in this bathroom scene, you can see that the side of the bathtub, the window, everything outlined in red is facing directly at you, and it is its true form. But look at the counter, look at where the uh, vanity that has the sink situated in it. Those lines converge and move forward, right? So those are distorted because of perspective. But just because some of the lines in an image are distorted by perspective doesn't mean all of them are. So the surfaces that are facing us head on and not angling off toward the vanishing point are called true shapes. Eye level, the level at which your eyes view something. And this uh, corresponds very often to where the horizon line is and therefore where our vanishing point is. So sometimes when we're talking about drawing and talking about perspective, 
will say you have a worm's eye view, meaning you're looking up at whatever it is. This is particularly relevant when we look at three-point perspective, or you have a bird's eye view, so you're up above and looking down at something. So where your eye level is, <clears throat> is going to impact the perspective and the distortion in the image to make it look realistic. So where the eye level of the viewer is, is something that you want to consider when you're figuring out your compositions. Multiple vanishing points. So we have surfaces that travel away from the viewer and converge towards a single vanishing point, like in one point perspective. We also have um, multiple vanishing points in two point perspective and three point perspective. And this is just a student drawing illustrating this. So we have all our converging lines that line up with the um, aspects of the room that are being drawn are picked out in blue and the horizon line and the vanishing point are picked out in red. Here's another example. So one of your exercises, not one of the in-class exercises, but one of your exercises is for one point perspective and it's an indoor space. This is an example of that project. So this is when you're looking down a hall, um, you can do a good illustration of one point perspective. This is another one point perspective. This is from actually upstairs at uh, my graduate school. That one's a little bit not a great quality of image, but you get the idea. Okay, so then two point perspective. This is where we have our parallel lines converging at two different points. Okay, so we have two vanishing points off to either side rather than one vanishing point in the center. Here's just another example of how that works. And for your for two-point perspective, all of these we'll do in-class exercises in a minute on um, and work out how to create these with kind of a simple, simple step-by-step -step exercises that I'll walk you through. But for your exercises, you have one for one point and one for two point. And for your two-point perspective exercise, you will draw the outside of a building like this. So you'll be looking at the corner and looking at how it diminishes in either side. And here's like a not quite complete drawing like that from a student so you can kind of see what that looks like. Okay, three point perspective. We're going to do an exercise, one of our in-class exercises about this, but you uh, don't have an additional out of class exercise about three point perspective. Um, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's the, our parallel converging lines vanish to three points. And it alters depending on your perspective. Are you looking down? bird's eye view or are you looking up worm's eye view and so that is something to consider when you're talking about three-point perspective and here's just an illustration of a building from above okay so now that we've talked about perspective in general what I want us to do is go uh, through and do the in-class exercises and there's a video for each one point two point and three point perspective and then you'll post your drawings, and like I said, it's kind of step by step I walk you through it. You'll post those drawings on the discussion board um, about your perspective exercises. All right, see you next time.